holding on. Just fucking going it, going it, going it, going it. And welcome to another episode of Ripping the Rack Podcast. I believe we're on episode 102, 103, 101, 100 and something. Uh, Excuse me while I've got a cat tail in front of me. Oh, cat. My new cats are hiding under the couch. Uh, Tim, so I, Tim, I, I hold tell, on before we Tim, before we go. Your, hold I, on, don't no, tell your no. cats I say hi. I know they miss me. Okay, uh, Lucy Kelvin says hi. See? Um, she knows. So I was given some information uh, or some feedback. Breaking news. Some feedback oh. that uh, uh, I never introduced with first and last names. And people are like they don't know who I'm speaking about, and I'm like, how the hell do you not know? So I am your host, Tim Matero. I, I I don't know if I'm supposed to give my social security number, my you know mother's maiden name, blood type, and and everything else. Uh, with me today is uh, King of the North, Mr. Calvin Locke, or yes, as Locke. it's pronounced Calvin. up there, Lockie. Lock. No, uh, it's Locke. 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 Uh, date of birth, August 24th. Um, Christmas and uh, birthday presents are now melded into one since you missed my birthday. Uh, <laughs> well, um, miss Medicare birthday. Medicare card number is... <laughs> I, I did not miss your birthday. No, you didn't. That's right. But I didn't get my present, so... It was, it was seeing us. I sent you a... X-rated picture of me for your birthday. Yeah. And I had dinner with you exactly the day before your birthday. So. And you guys, you guys with us, as this nice. show is already off the rails, uh, we have the Coastal Crusader. His That's name, me. folks, is Brian Athern. Yep. That is He's me. A, he, is a, uh, he is our uh, resident wrestle man, offensive lineman. Um. Jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, yep. And my birthday is about six months after Christmas, which I think is optimal because as a kid, every six months I got presents. So I, awesome. I, before we move on, I have something I have to read. Okay. And this is for Calvin's birthday. Do we have a poem from Josh Rio? No, no. Oh, we, have we, a, we, we, have, we have a message. A message. Yes. Uh, to a guy who has been everyone's pain in the ass at least one to a hundred times, to a rival and a friend, to a guy who pushes me on and off the lanes. I don't know why you push him off the lanes, but that's kind of rude. For 25 years, you have been my buddy. Uh, because of you, I became a better person. And because of you, I became a better bowler. I may have only beat you on the lanes a handful of times, but I appreciate everything you have said and done over that time. Even if sometimes I wanted to put your head through the ball return, happy birthday, bud, and keep crushing it on the lanes. And that is from I Ian or <laughs> Ian James McGregor. It's Connor's brother. Yes, Connor yes. McGregor's yeah. brother. Yeah. I think so, we've yeah. all wanted to put Calvin's head through the ball return at least a few times when we bowled him. That's good. I'm glad. Because the more you're thinking about putting my head in the ball return, the less you're thinking about your ball going to the middle of the pins. So, so that's all I, I have never thought of doing that while I was bowling against him because I don't think about him when I'm bowling against him. I just bowl. I might have thought it afterwards. <laughs> oh, Timothy, we know you're just that much better than all of us. Nope. Got nothing to do with being better. I no, just don't blocking hit. things out. Trust me, trust me. I watched him bowl a couple weeks ago. Yeah, well, it wasn't. It wasn't. Oh, great. we're gonna talk about that. I have a feeling. Talk about what? Your unbelievably terrible doubles. bowling uh, two weeks ago. Did I bowl? Oh, you you bowled. <laughs> Dude, I threw you pulled a lot. I threw a lot you of bowling balls. I now know I now know what it's like to be Brian on the lanes. Right? And I think after you get down lower than the Brian level, it's time to retire. And what did I say when I was there? 
No, at least four years before you retire. At no, least. no, no. Yeah, yeah. We're I'm on a, I'm I'm on a one year contract at this point. I'm on a year by year contract. It's day to day. Or week to week. Well, I've committed to this year. Didn't they used to have those in the NBA? They'd sign day to day deals. Yeah, yeah, ten a ten, ten day, day deal. deal. Ten day ten deal. Day deal. Yeah, you're on yeah. ten and day deal at keep, this point. Then you just keep extending it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on a I'm on a ten day deal. Uh no li- so yeah, we'll we'll jump right in. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, uh, I don't know what you're calling it. International, International mixed doubles, mixed doubles at the one seven ten Sports Center, now owned by Mark Carrier. Not yet. Not official. Well, uh, not Mark officially Carrier. yet. I I don't know who's paying the bills, nor do I give a flying fuck. But Mark is buying it at some point. Well, so congratulations to uh, Miranda and Travis Wallace, the brother sister duo, for winning. The mixed doubles international yep. championship. Not bad for sleeping in the tent. Yep. Yeah, apparently that's the that's the uh, key to victory. Sleep in a tent. Can't they, uh, they bowled great. I mean, I watched uh, I watched some of them. They were, you know, I wasn't near them a lot. Uh, they were usually on no. one side of the yeah. lanes or on the other. Um, yeah. But definitely watched uh, watched both of them. They'll bowl all weekend when i could um they threw a great ball um i was i I, god how do i how do i word this um my bowling balls almost ended up in the kennebec and my bowling shoes almost ended up in the atlantic because i i figured if they were that far apart they wouldn't find each other and come back to the house is that as far apart as the ball was to the head pin for you so yes and no um, I was all around the head pin. I hit the quarter pin a lot, so I was definitely close. It's the head pin at one time. In the rack. It was definitely the head pin at one time. Um, I had two strings out of the 17 over 120. And that was a 120 on the dot and a 136. Man, you had a lot of fun then that weekend, huh? But I had no strings below a 100. That's good. So if I know you, that is just enough where you can completely melt down and leave, but just frustrating enough where you thought you could do better each time, but you just sucked all day and you just got so frustrated. Is that about right? Um, so I, I that had, nails it on the head. <laughs> kind of. Um, I had um, a big time back problem that oh, I no. that I couldn't hotel take, bed. So I, so I couldn't bend over to bowl um but you i need thought, to start bringing like a mattress with you so you can just be comfortable you sleep like shit in hotels all the time in bed it's up in his own bed then he what is the problem the i'm fucking old look okay. legit in the bowling in the bowling world i'm old i have in, in the regular world, world you're getting old Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, part of the podcast where Brian and Tim yell at each other for no apparent reason. Well, we're Here we go. Pretty much, so. Well, I'm I'm trying to get it so uh, he understands. Hold it. on, I'm old. hold on. This uh, this part of the podcast is called Tim's Excuses, and it's brought to you by Ace Bandage and Ben Gay. I've never been gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying. Calvin's eating his popcorn. I I I don't have any excuse other than I struggle to bend over, which is very important for me because you've, I you've I never know had that problem. About, I know people joke about my height. Newsflash: I've been fucking short my entire life. There is nothing anyone can say to me <laughs> that I haven't heard before, but it is highly important for me to be able to bend over. To really get my arm out and throw the ball with some right, power. Right, because your rotation changes and, and it doesn't hit the right way and Correct. you punch. It's flat. So when I was on the head pin, I left a lot of two and twos, two and ones, three and ones, a lot of splits. Um, Were you bouncing the ball, Tim? Of course I was because I couldn't bend over, so I was bouncing the ball. So does that take this rotation off the ball? Yes. I'm just trying to explain to people why that what you're saying impacts how pin action so, is because you so can we're hit trying the head to make pin. This, so we're trying to make this an educational yes, portion. Yes, exactly. We're trying to make it educational. So what Tim's saying is, is when you can't bend over 
and you bounce the ball, you take all the rotation off your ball. So therefore, when you hit the head pin, even though you're hitting the head pin, you're hitting it flat, and that sucks. So, And I, I know tried, because that's what happened to me when I put on all that weight. So I tried to compensate by throwing the ball harder. Well, that's a bad idea because then you hurt more. So the other problem is, and this, again, this is all self-inflicted. No excuses other than Tim's own dumbass nest. Okay. I hadn't thrown a ball in two months. My pinky exploded on uh, Sunday during, I don't know what string it was. 15? Right around there, 14, 15, whatever it was. So again, I only have myself to blame. I've allowed myself to get um, complacent, pregnant. I am pregnant. I am I am about seven and a half months pregnant. Uh, it's a festivist miracle. Yes, which because I've allowed myself to to develop the keg in the middle, I can't bend over because that affects my back. It's because, a protective covering for your six pack. Yes, yes, I have a protective covering. Um, you know it. And yes, I do have, I have two degenerative discs in the lower back. It's very common. A lot of people have this issue. I allowed it to impact my ability to bowl. And I was in a very piss poor mood all weekend when I was bowling. Now, I did not throw pins away. I didn't swear. I didn't kick the ball return. I didn't punch anything. I didn't do any of that. It just affected me mentally to a point where I was legit ready to retire on the spot and never step foot in a bowling alley again. However, I have committed to this next year. I am going to give it my best attempt this year. Good old college try. Give it the good old college try. Now that, now that sleepy Joe has, Forgiven $10,000 of my student loan debt. Just kidding, folks. We're not making this political. We're not going there. Oh, my God. I think I just heard half the half the people on here just through, like... That's all you get? Oh, that's too bad. What? I So, the fun thing about that is, is just to get into this little thing to piss a lot of people off. I paid my student loans off during the pandemic. Yep. So, it's also in there that you get back whatever you paid during the shutdown oh really yeah i get all my money back i didn't i didn't know that yeah all my loans were forgiven under the twenty thousand dollars because i got pell grants so yeah pay me oh so long story short we do not have results meaning i don't have averages who did what who didn't do what averages did they have averages well they had it but i don't think they ever posted it so I can't tell you who did what in the grand scheme of things, other than um, I, think I know Merrill averaged 128. Yeah, I think he was right around 128, 129, somewhere Who's in there. That? You Merrill. were you uh, were around that 126 time frame uh, time frame average. Time frame. Yeah, um, I think I was 124.2. I think I. Any surprises? Okay. Anybody bowl really good? That you know is you know. Cole Fry was terrible. Oh, Cole! Cole didn't hit. <laughs> Cole, I didn't mean it that Cole, way, guys. Cole didn't, Jesus. Cole didn't realize how to bowl until I told him how to bowl. Cole's Saturday. He averaged, I think, one hundred and one. I think he, I don't think he hit. He did not hit eleven hundred. He didn't hit. I think he was one thousand and four. I think for Saturday. So I'd like to really call out Cole Fry on his. Amazing. Well, he only bowled five strings. So, I mean, that's an average of 200. That's impressive. Um, Uh, Yeah. So. Very, very impressed. Sorry, someone someone just sent me a message that I had to respond to. Not a problem. um, Yeah. So I gave him I gave him two lessons. The first one was he needed to slow down because every time he would go, 
his feet were ahead of his body and he was going forward and then just dropping the ball. So I told again, him to slow again, down. folks, we're teaching you things from these mistakes that we're seeing. Yes. You need to slow your first step down because your first step always needs to be ahead of your body. If your body is ahead of your first step, you're in trouble because you're going all the way down instead of equal and your leg being the power motion towards the pins. So he wasn't doing that. Every time he'd go, he'd be forward first before he and he's starting to run and his arms trying he to catch bounce up. the ball into the air. Yeah, absolutely. And then the second lesson I had to teach him, c'est pour parler français avec sa belle fille, Courtney, puis s'il pratique pas le français, Courtney donne lui pas le special time, là. Alors, mm, Courtney, elle garde cette vidéo ici. Ma belle, s'il pratique pas, on va parler. Uno we'll momento subtitle for that war, flipping taco. <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll subtitle that on YouTube. Yeah. You don't need to. You don't need to subtitle it. I'm basically just speaking French because I told okay, Cole. I, that, I, I picked that up. Yeah, his his girlfriend loves French. She says she loves it when guys speak French. So I taught him a couple of phrases. So I said, well, if you're gonna do that, then you know she's gonna get a little more excited. <laughs> and I said, if you don't, <laughs> you're going to be in trouble. That's funny. Yeah. So I told her I'd speak French to her on the podcast. <laughs> um, it was it, it was a very difficult weekend. Um, it, was. Unfor- it was unfortunately, it was unfortunately, bad. there was there was they struggled with a couple of lanes. Um mm. And it seemed to be the same ones, and and you know, we're talking to Mike. There was a re- there was a relay issue, yeah. where the gate was missing the relay, and they just couldn't. No. Figure out. Yeah, yeah. That really hurt a anymore. lot of. That really hurt a lot of like momentum, string to string. Yeah. Because I found the first the first couple strings that we bowled, uh, myself and Mario, and we were bowling, and the first first three or four boxes we couldn't like we couldn't throw the ball at all and then the fifth and sixth we'd have a couple marks and then we'd throw a couple marks in the seventh and eighth or something like that and we'd get our 230 240 but then we'd have a half an hour wait and we're coming off three out of five in the back half and we come back again the first three three or four boxes and we can't throw a thing yeah. Because we have that long, like half an hour wait. We were just standing there. Everybody else was done, and it was it was a great look. It's the most amount of teams they've had for this. Absolutely, uh, which 36 is great. Teams, Absolutely, it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I I thank Mike for doing the tournament. You know, running mm-hmm. the tournament. I thought the Bar staff was did great. A, Food was great. The, the staff did a great job. They just struggled with a couple of the lanes. Yeah. I expect over the course of 36 teams, two days, 17 strings each, I expect some breakdowns. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. There is never going to be a tournament that doesn't have no. something No, balls happen. are jammed or something. Yeah. yeah whatever. You know, but it, it just, unfortunately, and, you know, in talking to Mike, he was like, look, you know, he even told me, he's like, we went over these machines over these last two weeks. Like he thought with a fine tooth nail to to get it resolved, and you know credit to them they they did their best under the under pressure to you know yeah, to make they sure did the turn really well they yeah did really well yeah. um you know pinfall was down um yeah from from usual, yep, I find it was a little tougher if you were in the pocket, you were getting good but for the most part it was a little rough over here and then not so much over here and then you maybe get one extra pin but the wood came in and just sat in a terrible spot and you you had tough shots a lot yeah Uh, and i mean it was like i i remember and you know just to rub it in a little even though they won the string against travis we were down we were bowling them and i think we were down 17 pins or something or 18 pins with three boxes to go and i was open and that shot i had to make 
I was off the head pin. I had to make the three and one, but there was a nice wood, but I still had to make three and one and then buried a ball in the pocket and left the two and one left the three, the three, six, seven. And it was just like, okay, well, that was such a good ball. It deserved more than that. But then, you know, had to make a nice shot to beat them. Yeah. So it's like, I, I don't mind it because, you know, I love making nice shots and making people feel bad. But it's just like, that was such a good ball. It should have been at least an eight pin break, if not maybe a nine pin break. And it's just, it was just stingy. Something yeah, it was, was it moving. was. It was weird. Now, some of that was weather based, I think, because it was hot. Yeah. Um, it was it's hot all, super hot that day. It, it, and it was a little humid. Um, yeah. You know, but what was what was cool to me, um, and look, is, is I know people kind of sit back and be like, the hell is he talking about here? But what was yeah. kind of cool to me was that amount of teams to see the new, what I'm going to call the new bowlers that are showing up to these types of tournaments. Yeah, yeah. Because they they know that this is how they're going to get better. On yeah. this, on the vice versa side of that is seeing some of your older bowlers. And for yeah. example, um, Al Nelson. Uh, Al has been making a steady kind of comeback over the last couple of years. Al was one of the best bowlers in the state of Maine for many years back in the late 80s and early 90s. Um you know, I, I can I, I know of at least two tournaments that I lost where I went fourteen hundred and he went higher fourteen hundred. So or at least one that I know of in Bangor. Um, right. so wasn't his like third string a hundred and sixty something or what he did? Uh that was second string. Second uh, string, yeah. He against went like 100... Holbrook. I think it was Hol- against Holbrook, yes. wasn't it? Uh because yes. the next the yes. next string Aaron and I bowled him and Michelle. Yeah, and Aaron went one. Aaron went one fifty, um, and I went one thirty six, and we yeah, had you, you know two eighty six. We had the or something, didn't you? I think that was the high, the high single for the weekend. I think. Yes. Yeah. Which I is funny so. because Aaron and I didn't come close to doing anything <laughs> other than that, um, but it was cool because I I I talked to uh, Michelle and Al Bold next to us quite a bit for the entire Michelle. Just, Oh, Michele. 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 Um, Michele. So it was kind of neat to talk to her over the course of the weekend because, you know, she grew up, she went to the same school I did. Yeah. And come to find out her sisters were in school with me. And I just didn't, I didn't put two and two together. So it was just kind of neat to catch up. Like, I haven't seen her sisters in 30 years. Yeah. So it was kind of neat to sit back and just talk about you know, back home where I haven't lived for 28 years. So, yeah. you know, but the whole point behind that was, you know, seeing uh, like Al Nelson coming back, uh, seeing him make that comeback and he threw, he's throwing a better ball. Like the yeah. more he does, the the explosiveness is coming back. And then to see him team up with someone like Michelle, who took many, many years off and is now yeah. coming back. Um, that was kind of cool. Um, you know, you saw Richie Grassi, who, you know, everybody knows Larch and everything yeah. else. Um, yeah. But then you see like uh, like Paul Dyer and Lou Dyer and uh, Mark Webber's mother. Like she bowled with Lou and yeah. like that was her first tournament. First big tournament. Nice. Like she's done some of the nine pins and things like that. Yeah. But they were they were in the playoff running after Saturday. They were six yeah. and four, five, five, or something yeah. like that. Um yeah. so it was just it was just kind of cool to see. Um yeah. you know, Aaron and I didn't bowl well. We we struggled. Um you know, now unfortunately in years past, if I've struggled, Aaron had bowled well and we were able to win some strings, or if she had struggled, I had bowled well, so we were able to win some strings and you know, this time it just didn't, it didn't happen. Um, but I did see a lot of low, you know, you'd see someone win with like a 205. Oh, yeah. And then someone would lose with 240. You know, it's just kind of funny to me. Yeah. Um, it happens a lot. Too. Yeah, exactly. It happens yeah. so crazy because you just, not that you 
The hard part yeah, is when I mean, you see yes, that in the playoffs, when you lose with 240 and somebody wins with 210. Yeah. And you look over and you're like, why didn't we get that match? Yeah, like, and, then the, and then the next string they win, like, they win with the 257 or something and yeah. beat you. It's like, ah, oh, get out of here. Yeah. So, I, yeah, yeah, no, it was, I had fun. You know, it, yeah, I, me too. I had a great time. It had fun afterwards. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, um, I had I had company for the weekend, so that was that was uh, you know. I, I did not pull. I played disc golf, so and went on vacation. So. Yeah. No, but like dinner, dinner afterwards on Saturday, that was fun. Oh, was fun. Yeah, you know, rolls outside. Oh, it's the best. oh my god. <laughs> you know. So Brian, just, uh, were you there? No, you weren't there. Did you hear the no. story? No, I have not heard any stories. So. So we were we were meeting after the bowling was done, and we were going to Texas Roadhouse to eat. So we had all started sitting outside waiting for each person to show up. Well, once we all got there, they had to send the text message. Okay, we're all here, and then we'll send you a text message back when you're ready. So we're sitting in these two benches that are kind of in a circle there. Well, there's this window, and people were coming to the window. I'm like, oh, I think that's the takeout order. So after the third person showed up, I Whose knocked food on the... did you steal? No, 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 no. It's not that bad. It's it's bad. But it's not that bad. So I knocked on the window. I said, "Hey, buddy, we got a table in there. Would you mind giving us some bread while we're waiting?" So he turns around the corner and he goes, "You did." Oh yeah. He goes, "There's a batch coming up. I'll bring you out a couple baskets when you're when they're ready." I said, "Perfect." So I said, "Can we get some butter too?" He's like, "Yeah." No. So he came out with. Three- <laughs> Three trays of breadsticks and, or oh bread bowls and some butter. It was the best. It was the best thing ever. It was, it was funny. Oh, yeah. That's great. It, it was funny. But, you know, it, I don't know. It was just, I, the older I get, the more I'm enjoying the social aspect of That's bowling. That's the only reason you bowl. You're not bowling. Bowling tournaments are about the like, time off the lanes more so than I know. But it, for me, it was always about the bowling. So it's. Over the last several years, it's becoming more and more about, you know, the oh, making memories, bud. I know. It was, what, it was that's always, what I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You're just selfish, Tim. God. <laughs> you're not the first person to say that. <laughs> I never thought you I were was good but... for so long. Huh? Try sucking for a while. You start appreciating bowling more. Yeah, you start suck. to appreciate the social aspect of it. <laughs> when you suck. You know, I don't know. It was, it, it, I look, I bowled like shit, but it was fun. I did. I'll say it now. See, you I, appreciated the social aspect. Yeah, I, you appreciated I it more. I did. I appreciated the social aspect. Um, you know, um, because if you don't, you're going to bludgeon yourself to death with your comments. Oh, I, 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 I oh, I, no, wait, never mind. You, if you tried to hit yourself with a bowling ball, you'd miss. Nice. That wasn't Put him, price, boom. Brian. You said you bowled that bad. Could you have hit the water out of a boat? You were pretty terrible, Tim. <laughs> that, and was you're, pretty, you're, that was bad. Like, you're if you were on bad. that cruise ship and you threw a bowling ball off the side, would you have hit the water? So, Or would you have hit a bird that would have flown off with it? I probably I probably would have hit one of the lifeboats. <laughs> and sunk that it? That would have... <laughs> been enough where it like broke my back but not killed me <laughs> like just just permanently damaged me no i was talking about throwing a bowling ball off the boat and hit water if you oh god no hit. i wouldn't hit i wouldn't hit the water That's like i saying. said you would hit a bird it would have stuck there and just flown off so like i i didn't make one cut shot the entire weekend i only threw That's normal. i only threw like five strikes all weekend you only said you weren't a strike bowler Trying to yeah, figure out what's different. My God, it was bad. It was it was bad. It was bad. I'll say it yeah. was bad. Yeah. Um, We're all allowed to be terrible. My last, at my last string was bad. So. In the in the roll up. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was bad. How bad? Oh, it was bad. I think I threw. Well, I I'm pretty sure I threw three out of five to finish for like a hundred and seventeen maybe, but it was bad. Two through three marks, all with four or five and six on them. Pretty much. <laughs> but, but see, that's what it, that's what I mean. Like my my strings, nothing below 100, but nothing above 120. Yeah. But I would end with 
you know, there'd be a middle stretch in there that would be like spare, spare, open, spare. Yeah. yeah. And then six box. Yeah. And be like. Because you're back in that groove from the break. Mm -hmm. That break kills everybody because you're not in that same groove. Yeah. For example, like one time we were the second, like maybe the first or second one's done. And I don't think, because I was bowling on the bottom, I don't think I threw a ball in 50 minutes. Well, here's I the waited, thing, then, Calvin. Waited. Should waited. all doubles tournaments be two boxes at a time? But it still didn't matter. It had nothing to do with the boxes. It, it, yeah. Okay. It was, all right. I didn't know breakdown. if it was. Waiting no, it was just the breakdown. No, it was just. No, the it, it, yeah. Because even it was I always the same and, lanes, and is, fourteen and eighteen. They were the same something. lanes that were. Yeah. yeah. This is off topic, but I've noticed. Even if somebody is a very slow bowler, they tend to bowl a little bit faster or it's not as noticeable two boxes at a time as it is five which is my argument for two boxes at a time i think it is a better way to bowl honestly because it keeps everyone more engaged and it's a quicker way to bowl yeah yeah i know you just used to it calvin because that's how everything is in canada right when I do, because it is true, because when I do five at a time, I'm like, okay, well, now I got 15 minutes. What am I going to go do with yeah. 15 minutes? Like, I can go out for a quick puff. I can go to the bar, get a drink, and order some food, and then be back, and it's still and not And then if there's turn. a breakdown, you're yeah. looking at 25 minutes to a half hour between halves. Yeah. It's true. Like, I, it's easier with two boxes. You're only up in the next, like, maybe, I think, most most games that I watch, because I watch a lot of YouTube stuff that's uploaded and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes when I'm watching myself, I only want to watch my two boxes just to kind of to watch to see how I threw what and figure out if I'm doing something stupid. Anyways, and I figured out it's about eight minutes between each person. So between your you're up from when you're up again is eight minutes bowling two boxes at a time. With a five with a five person team, you mean? With a five person, and team. it can be thirty minutes with a five person team, five boxes at a time. Yeah, that's literally almost a half hour where you're just sitting there, standing or, standing. or sitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now I know it goes quicker because if, well, maybe sort of, not even. I, I I think we could. I think we could would go quicker with two boxes at a time, four people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then everybody, you basically have no break until the string is over. Because you're going to have to be up here in like two or three minutes. <laughs> yeah. So you have enough time to go order a drink and come back. Or if your team throws a bunch of marks, you don't even have that. You might have, you know, six, seven balls and that's it. Yeah. And at that so, pace, we could even maybe do six people per lane. Yeah. And then you're even still, you're not... It's not too bad. You're still like 10 minutes, so you still have a 10-minute break where you can go and go get something. Mm -hmm. You have 10 so let's, minutes between. Let's move, let's move on because there are a couple of things that we got to get to, and then we can kind of circle back. Okay. Um, ah. So ah. Num number one, the, the non-Can-Am Can-Am. It's end very of understood that it's not the Can-Am. It is yes. not the Can-Am. It is the oh, non-Can-Am Canada versus America, non Canada mixed double. But you doubles. still can't bowl with cross country. You have to Correct. bowl with your own. Um, so as of yesterday, Mona had heard from 40 teams. Um, so you've got to, until September 5th to get your team in. Reach out to her. You can find her on Facebook, uh, Candlepin Chat. Find one of the posts that's been on it. Um, I'm I currently think, in need of a partner. So if anybody wants to bowl with me, <laughs> reach out, reach out and touch someone, Bry. Not inappropriately, whoa. though. Whoa, whoa. Not inappropriate. Whoa. Um, you know, that is coming up. Uh, that is the end of October, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think it's 28th, 29th, 30th, something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In Bangor. It's uh, a good tune up for the worlds. It, it is. Albert it Pujols is. hit another home run. Yes. Oh my uh, God! Let's see, we've got. He's going to seven before the I end of the year. So. Go on, uh, I think so. We've got. 
God, we're going to miss so much tonight, and that's okay because I just was not prepared. Yeah. Whatever. It's the uh, off season. Bowling starts soon, though. It does. I it uh, does. see they're taking the sign-ups for or the for. Uh, oh, the Dave Stewart. Or you posted. Well, yeah, he posted that, but that's not until like March. Hope, right, hopefully, he's trying to figure out the date. We need the rip in the rack team. Oh, candle pins for cancer. Yes. Uh, qualifying mm-hmm. rounds at Lakeside Lanes in Manchester. Uh, there will be six shifts. That will be Tuesday, September sixth. Thursday, September eighth. Those are eleven a.m. And then you have Saturday and Sunday, September 10th and 11th, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, you register at CandlepinsForCancer.com. Top five to the live TV show on September 25th at Bolarama in Portsmouth. Um, that is also potentially being picked up by WON out of New York, who is looking to possibly syndicate this on like public access which would be cool. pretty cool. Right. Uh, um, so that's coming up. Uh, Brian, you got the uh, Amateur Candlepin Bowlers Tour playoffs. Yeah, there's the playoffs. I play? unfortunately had qualified, but I cannot bowl. Uh, this is going to be at Timberlanes, I believe. And on the left side, uh, receiving a bye was John Ahern. No relation to me. Uh, and then we have uh, David Rando and Mark Gill in a first-round matchup. And then in other matchups, we have Harry Britty uh, versus Mark Gallagher, Mike Capone versus Sean Pertis, Matt DiPietro versus John Nichols. Uh, Mercy Ewing did receive a bye also in that bracket, so her and John received a bye. Uh, Dom Polito received a bye. And then on the right side, we have Spencer Alisi and Justin Kochi, Craig Powers and Dan Finn, Matt Nichols and Stephen Carden, Anthony Kerr, Karen and Nate Wheeler and Dan Estale also received a buy on the right side. So those are your playoffs for the first amateur Candlepin tour. All right. Nice. Good luck, guys. I hope uh, that is going to be. Uh, I think it was the first weekend in September uh, after Labor Day. So, or yeah. <laughs> At 10 a.m. at Timber Lanes. Nice. Tim, did we talk about the uh, Hall of Fame rematch yet? No, I was going to. No. Why don't you uh, start Sure, that I one. can do that. So, uh, a post from Paul Grant. We had, uh, it says, a big, huge turnout today at the Bowler Ammon in Portsmouth. They were the Hall of Fame rematch between Tom Olston and Peter Flynn. Uh, Peter would prevail with 367 to 347 victory. Apparently, Tom also won the Skittle Bowl match, whatever the heck that was. Do we know what that was? Was it something? It's like a tabletop bowling, if I remember right. Skittles is like, uh, okay, uh... okay, cool. Uh, apparently, Tom and Peter signed some wow shirts, candle pins, bowling balls, so it was great. Uh, dozens of great fans came to watch. Uh, they were awesome, very generous, apparently. They raised $1,441 for Candlepins for Cancer. So Very cool. That's great. Yeah, it was good. Apparently, really good turnout. So, that's good. So, that was on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, Nikes. What's the... Uh, Candlepin... Oh. What's the... New, oh my god, I don't know. It used to be Spread Eagle Productions, and why they ever had to change the name, I don't know. Candlepin Bowling Network, is yeah. that what it is? Yeah, uh, okay. yes, Candlepin Bowling Network, and subscribe for free. So, pound that subscribe button. Pound uh, it. the ACST season starts this week. Uh, there will be a total of 1,008 matches scheduled. This now includes folks from Maine. Wow. Wowzers. Wow. 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 Uh, so, yeah. It'll be a lot of lemon drop dollars. Yes. Yep. Uh, let's see. I feel like we're... God, I do. I Oh, we got we got a couple of questions here from... 
a gentleman right. here, uh, Mr. Like Wayne Petty. Okay. Uh, what are we answering? Let's for see. Wayne. Oh, he would like, he actually has some uh, tournament etiquette questions. Oh, okay. This fall, he is going to participate in his first tournament, and he wants to be considerate of other bowlers. Okay. So, <laughs> some of this is going to be... Screw him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, you know, the first question he asks is, how do you know when it's your turn to bowl? Do you look to both sides, wait for an opening? You know, how many lanes do you look to the right? How many lanes do you look to the left? Blah, blah, blah. I'll answer this one pretty fucking easy. Don't cut anyone off and go when you're ready. Yep. Wow. What if you're ready and you're cutting somebody off? Then the bowler on the right has the right of way. And that doesn't just include your match. Like. Unless you have a separation, if it's just lane next to lane and the bowler on the or right is ready, just let him go, even if he's on the left in his match. It'll just, benefit you both. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'm usually, I mean, and, and a lot of people would attest to this, I'm usually very vocal about it. I'm like, go ahead. I'm, I'm not ready. Yeah. Like, go ahead. I'm not, I'll be, and then I don't wait for me. It's a comfort thing, man. You, you'll eventually yeah. figure out within... Within one or two trips, you're going to figure out the person you're going to be matched up with for the majority of that match and how they bowl. Just get comfortable and bowl when you're ready and like don't cut anybody off, like Tim said. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the second part of that is if it's a singles tournament with no head-to-head -head competition, how do you know when it's okay to reset the pins? I usually, your do box. It. I usually do it when the person has finished throwing whatever ball they're throwing. So if they go to throw a ball, I'll push my button after they've thrown their ball. Yeah. It depends on if it's like the Worlds or if it's like a straight just total pinfall tournament. Obviously, I try not to push the button in anybody's face. What I mean by that is if they're throwing, I'm not going to push the button while they're getting ready to let the ball go. Um, no, no, of course not. Yeah. yeah. Um, I let, I let it, them release the ball. Yeah. And, and overall, it's I typically push my button when they're done their box, even if I throw a strike. Wait for them to finish their box, push their button. Now, if it's a singles thing, I wait for them to throw their ball. If I threw a strike, once they're done, I push my button because it's singles. It's not really you're matching up with anybody. You're bowling total pinball. Yeah, singles tournament, I don't go ball for ball box no. with anyone. I bowl my own speed. Unless. Not cutting anyone off. I do wait if, if, it, if you drew lanes with somebody. And somebody's up with somebody else. I wait for the person on the on my lane set to finish their half before I go up and oh, start. Yes. I bowl with the person who drew in the same position I did, but I yes. don't necessarily bowl box for box with them. Correct. So Wayne, for example, if Brian and I are on the same lanes, and let's say you and Calvin were on the same lanes, and I was bowling, I was bowler number one, and Brian was bowler number two, I would get up when my lane partner person on my set of lane got up so if calvin was bowling number one then we'd get up with bowl but i'm not bowling box for box with against calvin if it's a singles tournament i'm bowling my own thing just again being aware of my surroundings and knowing not to you know cut anyone off now if it's a match like two teams yeah i'll bowl box for box with the person i'm bowling with that's just how I prefer to do it. Yeah. I do it because uh, then everybody's up at the same time. and you Exactly, just go. yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Watching tournaments on YouTube, I don't ever see officials who judge lobs and foot fouls. Do these Ralph Stewart types exist? But you just don't see them on the broadcast. I'm not sure I can self-report these infractions because I'm not always aware when I commit them. Um. It's the lob, uh, the foot fouls, as long as the foul lights are on, you don't need to self report anything like that because yeah. the yeah. foot foul lights on. And even if they're not on, it's easy for somebody like myself. I'm a spot bowler, so I look at the floor when I release the ball rather than the pins, so I can tell when my foot goes over. And plus, there's a light most of the time and well, a very yeah. Very loud buzzer in some places. Well, yeah, yeah. If, they're, if they're on. Yeah. But if they're off, it's a little... It's a little harder. Um, it, it is, and people are less inclined now to... I don't know. I Enforce I, it. 
Let's yeah. face it. Do we I, have do we have any sort of regulation in the world lately? Let's no. face it. The foul no. lights aren't on and there's no love. But but also but it's self police. Do we do we really, really care that much? Unless it's egregious enough. Like if if a little if your toe front toe goes over the line, do you really think that is any different? Not no, unless it's honestly the only time I have an issue is if it's egregious if, if and it's going over the line every ball. And it's yeah, it's it's. And I don't care if your toe's going over or, or not. Just stay behind the line. And as far as lobs go, I'm gonna say it. Oh my God! For the love of all things holy. Keep it on the right side. Keep it on the side of the lob line closer. You have a to you. lot of room to work with. Like there is no reason to lob the ball. It actually hurts the owner. It hurts the proprietor's house when you lob the ball consistently. Dead slains. So stop fucking doing it. Okay, I'm <laughs> off my soapbox. I I do. I have no use for people that consistently lob. And and look, I'll call myself out on it. Have I have I lobbed the ball? Obviously. And when people say, hold on, when people say it doesn't help you to lob, bullshit. It's a lot easier to make a single pin when you have to navigate 40 feet of a lane rather than 60. I, you roll the ball. There's a reason why it actually says in the rule book that you can't throw it overhand. Because I looked. Because I wanted to. Mm-hmm. And you can't. So you're supposed but anyway. to deliver it from an underhand motion. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, do you have any general tips on how to be considerate or, on the other hand, annoying things to avoid when bowling in a tournament? Uh, avoid talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a life goal, man. Yeah, I know. Mine, too. I hope you don't talk to me. <laughs> here's, here's the things that grind my gears when bowling, uh, in bowling tournaments. Love it. The things that piss me off. What is it? Let's go. Yeah! <laughs> and this is, gonna, score. It, this is going to be funny coming from me because I was known as being an asshole years and years ago. I would kick the ball return. I would slam the bowling balls. I would, you know, do all sorts of dumbass things. The older I get, the more I realize how much that it just annoys the living shit out of me. <laughs> just don't be a dick on the lanes. And when don't that, be a dick I, off the lanes either. Like, oh, I don't care. I in look, the bowling I, alley. No, because when you're a dick in the bowling alley, it rubs off on everybody. It ruins everybody's time. Here's the thing. I don't care off the lanes because if you're... If you're being a dick, I'm not talking to you anyway. Right. I'm not going to hang out with you if you're I'm not a dick hanging out with you. I'm not talking to you. I meant like in the no. bowling alley. Don't be a dick in the bowling alley. Because it affects what everybody. What do you mean? If you there's mean a like... bar fight, it's going to affect you on the lane. Oh, well, no. Oh, I'm going to well, sit back and watch that. I mean, I'm not going to participate. But, but that's, also, that's also from being dicks on the lanes. Because you're not going to be... I mean, granted, you might if somebody makes a stupid comment. But you're not going to be fighting somebody at the bowling alley unless they've done something to you on the lanes or something right for the most part right so I, so what I, what do i mean by this is look if i'm if i'm up bowling and we've all had this happen to us or we may have all done it you miss a shot a shot doesn't go you slam the bowling balls and you hear it six lanes over what if you yell an obscenity really loud yeah. Or, or uh, I am guilty of that. I try. I'm trying to be better at it. I am. I am trying to be better. You need at to it. be. I saw you do it in front of your mom. Oh, I yeah, whatever. My mom's heard worse come out of my mouth. I, I don't know what you want me to say. Um, but it, it has a it it has an effect on people. Meaning, if I'm in the middle of my approach and someone slams a bowling ball two lanes over, I've seen you stop. It's very difficult to stop mid-approach, though. It is. I've done it a couple times. But you know, and I don't, yeah. I don't want to blame missing a shot or get leaving the leave because someone did something fucking dumbass four or five lanes away from me. But it happens, and you just 
don't. Like, I <laughs> just don't. You know what to do. Like, what are you, Stuart from Mad TV? I know, I know it's funny coming from me. I get it. Hell, Mark Smith and I had the most letters from the association, state association threatening to suspend us for our attitudes. Help get the vote. Santa Claus. <laughs> tournament. I, well, you know what? That's that's on the proprietor for putting up <sighs> a whole birthday party of like five lanes right next to a state devils tournament. That was fun. That was a great time. Literally, and, I, and I'll leave it this: two kids ran in front of Tim and stole his bowling balls while he was bowling. They came over, took them off the rack, and ran away. Yeah, in the middle of a state tournament. Yep. Nice. Yeah. I love it. So, you know, Wayne, I know we kind of digress there, but ultimately, be a good person. It's I don't care. Or be respectful of others. Next, in a tournament, bowling, if someone's bowling on my right or left, I don't care if they're a good bowler or a bad bowler. I don't. I only care about are you considerate of the people around you? Do you understand bowling? Meaning, if you understand bowling, you understand what I just said. Yeah, meaning I'm not going to cut anyone off, and I, I would hope that I'm not going to be cut off. That's right. all I care about. I don't care about someone bowling. Bo- Hell, I wish we'd go back to the world where you just get up and you bowled your two boxes. And if you threw a double strike at me and I was still in my first box, I don't care. Oh, well, let's not go crazy. I don't care. Let's not throw all the etiquette out the window. There is, that's not etiquette. There is, it's not etiquette. It's just like it's, you want to throw your boxes? Sure. It's not an etiquette that somebody has to bowl ball for ball. It's not but a thing. But then you're going to get a... some asshole that's going to be like, okay, no problem. You threw a double. Yeah, I can make this two, these two boxes take a half hour. I, I Okay, but you're, you're, this is where Brian goes and, and does his routine of, I can be the most but extreme other people example. Do that. It's an extreme example, but other people do it. Not a single person in the history of Evers has taken 30 minutes to bowl two boxes in the world. No. no. And nor will they. It nor will they, them, because it you, throws you them off see, more than anything. Right. So here's, I'm going to use, I'm going to take someone young, for example. Even though he's been around the bowling game a long time, and he looks like he's 75 years old. <laughs> John Jonathan Boudreau. <laughs> yeah, come on. We all know you're talking about Boudreau. Prime yeah. example, one of his first years in the world's, Bowling against me. I'm on the right. He's on his left. He's on my left. I leave some. I don't even remember the leave I left, but it took a second for me to look at this. Go, how the hell am I going to play this? He threw a strike, pressed his button. I missed my shot. He threw his next ball through a double strike. I picked up my 10, pressed my button, and I threw my next ball. It made no difference to me what he was doing. He didn't cut me off. Exactly. He didn't, he wasn't rude about anything. He bowled his speed. That's how he likes to bowl. I bowled my speed. That's how I like to bowl. That's why I don't care what the person does next to me bowling in a match. Mm -hmm. Because I'm always going to bowl my speed. Because that's how I'm comfortable. Yeah. I'm not going to cut someone off. No. And I'm not going to press my button That's when good. you're in the middle of your, you know, your approach. That I. Mm-hmm. And, and if you. I do, I apologize because it just simply means I yeah, wasn't you just paying, attention. paying attention. Yeah. And I've, I've seen it done, and I've done it a million times. If you let somebody else control the speed of your bowling, that person is going to take advantage of you because. Mm-hmm. They control how fast you throw your ball. And if you're in a groove, I'm going to throw you off as quick as possible. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to take that extra second. I'm going to clean off my ball. I'm yep. going to get set. And I'm going to throw you out of your rhythm. So if you let somebody else dictate how you bowl, you're now, done. I, I will say I there are times I'm a fast bowler. There are times I'm a slow bowler. I don't have a set speed that I, that I like to bowl. I just bowl what I'm comfortable 
and I know that sounds kind of odd, but I'm not a methodical bowler. You know, Joanne Rosano is a methodical bowler. Mark Gregory's methodical. Every ball is the same. They take the same amount of time to prep mm-hmm. themselves. Mm-hmm. I don't care. You know, that's fine. I know when I'm bowling them, that's how it's going to be. So I, I know we kind of digressed there and went down a little bit of a rabbit hole, but. Answering the question. So be yeah. <laughs> how uh, do we feel about your etiquette? <laughs> So, I, Wayne, I hope we answered your questions. Um, guys, we, we, we've got a new season starting mm-hmm. next week for most people. A couple weeks for us. A couple, couple weeks. Ne- sometime in the next two weeks, leagues are starting back up for the winter. Tournament, tournaments are starting. I don't know that I want to. A lot of stuff coming on. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say this to the masses. I I wish everyone a successful season. More than that, I wish everyone to have fun. May your balls be mighty and your pins be scared. And may you hit all the goals you set for yourself for the season. (laughs) Yeah. You know, yeah. Like I said, you know, I I don't know. I I just. I'm going to get my trophy in November. You know what, though? Honestly, for everybody out there, do something that makes you feel a little uncomfortable in bowling this year. If you don't bowl a pro tour, if you find one that's a singles one and you can afford it, bowl it. Find a tournament you don't often bowl in a scratch tournament, bowl it. Stress yourself out. Still, way you're going to get better. Yeah. Look again. I I go back to seeing all these new you know these new bowlers. Hell, I'm going to shout out. There's a couple of young bowlers that made their first big tournament appearance last weekend or two weekends ago, whatever it was now. You had uh, Peyton Dyer, uh, 14 years old, and Stephen Ashey, 16. Ashley, Ashy, Ashy, I think. I I get that mixed up. Um, Stephen, I apologize if, if I screwed up your name. 16 years old. Um, throws a hell of a ball. Peyton throws a great ball. She's going to be, if she sticks with the game, she is going to be something special in the game. Um, you know, Jenna Ward, uh, Jenna's 17. Threw a great ball. Um, you know, there was, again, there was some young people coming up through. It was really cool to see. Uh, you've got some upcoming tournaments. You've got the Exeter mixed doubles. Hell, you have the Exeter uh, women's doubles on the 10th, September 10th. And then you have the mixed teams at Exeter. That is on the 11th. Uh, you've got Outrun the Bear coming up. They just up. had the draft for the pro, the pro league, too. The Sunday Pro League, they just, just had the draft. Yep, just had the Sunday Pro League. You've got another draft coming up if you're interested in Maine. Uh, you've got two different uh, once a month. You have a traveling once a month. Uh, that's Kim Kanga Smith uh, is, is putting that together. And then Mark Carrier is doing a once a month scratch. Three person, two men, one woman, five string matches each, each time. So 10 strings uh, a day. Uh, that's coming up. You know, there is bowling out there. It's, it's, you got to go find Corey's, it. Corey's King of the Hills starting up here in Canada. He's starting that back yeah. up uh, September 25th, I think. He put his first. So come out and do that. Seven strings every Sunday. You're out of there by two o'clock. I'm usually on the road listening to the football game on the way back to Moncton. So you just, you come up, it starts at 10 o'clock and we're out of there in four hours. It's, Never know, and you could win. It's handicapped based on the highest average, and yeah, so he's starting that back up. And uh, there's a tournament the 29th of uh, or that following week or weekend before, and in, uh, in uh, New Glasgow, I think. Yeah, so there's tournaments: Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. You just gotta get out and find them. I I love it. I just. I, I know I talk about retirement. I know that you can be I, a miserable prick from time to time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's such a wow. dick. Wow. wow. Straight to it. Wow. Right okay. straight to that. Well, I mean, wow. yeah. I mean, when you don't bowl good, Tim, you're not very fun to be around in a bowling alley. I am just, off just, the lanes. Just pinch his testicles or something. Why don't you? Like, holy smoke. I, I'm fun off the lanes. It's just 
Yeah. No, no uh, not off the lanes. When you're out of the bowling alley, like out of the building, when you bowl bad, you're fine. No, I still think when I'm off the lanes, I'm okay. I just cried yeah. about it first. You're okay. all right. All right, touche. I'll give you that. Uh, you're all right. You're not. A, you're not a very good cuddler, but you know, you're okay. You know, hey, my cat. My cats were good cuddlers too. You oh know? yeah. Oh yeah. I cuddled with your pussies all weekend. But here's the here's the thing, Brian. If someone offered you a bed to sleep in, mm-hmm. or a couch, which one would you take? I would support whichever decision that the person that I was uh, catering to made. So I offered Calvin, yeah. I have a spare bedroom. He could shut the door. There's a TV in there. He could have just done what I was happy to put the AC up in there. He, and he chose the couch. Golden. He, he didn't want to be haunted by all of Jordan's dead lane babies. <laughs> Oh, that's a masturbation joke for those of you that don't that's quite true. understand. <laughs> yeah. On that note, uh, <laughs> folks, you can send your questions, your comments, your concerns to ripping the rack podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram, even though we never use it at yeah, ripping yeah, the rack yes. podcast. Big Brian, booty Brian. I, I Big booty need Brian. to apologize to all the listeners and to Brian. Our last episode, I never asked him to do this. Oh, God. Did people talk about it? No, but it occurred to me when I got off. I'm like, oh, wait. We totally screwed up that ending. So, Brian, (coughs) where else can they hear us? Well, Tim, they can hear us on Spotify, Anchor, Breaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and wherever else you listen to your podcast mediums. That was the dulcet, the dulcet tones of Brian Athern. That that's, so my, that, that's my uh, NPR voice. It was so orgasmic. I'm, I'm it, orgasmic. By the way, Calvin, Canadian we talk radio about is balls? awful. What? Canadian radio is awful. What do you mean? I'm so glad I had satellite radio. What are you talking about? Canadian radio is great. So, folks, uh, thank you. And uh, we hope you have enjoyed this episode. Uh, I do want to bring this up if you are still listening an hour and two minutes into this. Um, I have not forgotten there is a there is some things that I do want to talk about eventually. Uh, you know, one being mental health, um, the the impact of that, um, you know, suicide awareness, that type of stuff. I don't want this just to be about bowling only. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to make some type of impact other than. Uh, People just saying, wow, Tim's really a dumbass. So I'm just saying it. We have a platform. We will use it for good eventually. Eventually. Um, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. So thank you. Appreciate it. You guys have a good couple of weeks and we will see you guys soon. <laughs>